Hey y'all, Debo here. So a little while ago I made this quick chart on how to use Pac-Man's bell against a shielding opponent. While the reception was mostly positive, there were still some lingering questions I wasn't really able to answer. So I will do exactly that in this video. Ok so Bell S smash is obviously one of the best kill confirms in the entire game, but it has one fatal flaw. That is, if you miss the bell or your opponent shields it, well you're screwed, I don't know, I don't know what to tell you. But Debo, I can hear you say, my opponent keeps smashing safe aerials and shielding and I can't seem to find an opening. To which I have to say, ok don't worry, as long as you follow my formula you'll be able to connect 90% of all your bell throws. Well let's get started. There's three positions you have to keep in mind against a shielding opponent. There's up close facing your opponent, far away facing your opponent, and behind your opponent. Let's start with the worst possible position to be in as Pac-Man, and that is up close in front of your opponent. If you're standing here holding shield waiting for the opponent to do something, you're not the one putting pressure on them. In fact, they're the ones putting the pressure on you. You're not gonna punish anything from this distance. More often than not, they are just going to grab you and put you in disadvantage. You do not want to stand still in this position. What you should do instead is move to the three other positions. Position 2, far away in front of your opponent. From this distance, the opponent isn't really forced to hold shield, but you're putting enough pressure on them to the point that they don't want to approach and do something unsafe. But you want them to do something unsafe, right? Well, to achieve that, you'll need to dance around with your opponent a bit. Like, move around between close range and long range, and then hold shield whenever you're out of the grab range. In this position, you're waiting for your opponent to commit one of two options. Either a dash attack, or a dash grab. The option your opponent will pick is mostly character dependent, but considering the fact that you, the Pac-Man, are holding shield, it's safe to assume that it will almost always be a dash grab. In this case, you want to dash away and immediately throw the bell or spam spot dodge and then throw the bell. Speaking of the latter option, I advise doing some random spot dodges while dancing around with the bell in hand to make it harder for the opponent to find an opening. Now we get to position 3, the best position to be in and that is up close and behind your opponent. As soon as you get the bell in hand, you want to immediately get behind your opponent for as long as possible. Like that is the first thing you should do. And why is that? Well, they can't do anything but hold shield and pray you do something stupid, like prematurely throwing the bell against their shield for example. Pac-Man is practically untouchable in this position, and he doesn't even have to hold shield. You get to apply free pressure by just standing there. Let's take Marv for instance. If Pac-Man were standing in front of him, Marv will be able to use his grab, which is frame 6. But if Pac-Man is standing behind him, he cannot do that. If Marv wants to grab Pac-Man in that scenario, he will have to perform a turnaround grab, which is way slower and comes out as frame 18 because of the shield drop animation. In this scenario, all Marv really can do is use either a reverse up B out of shield, roll or mash buttons, all of which you can punish easily if you're holding shield. Unfortunately, there are some characters with unpunishable up B out of shield, such as Bayonetta or Game Awards. Why are you white? As for those characters, you'll just have to either catch their landing or reset neutral and play the dancing game all over again until they do something stupid. Well, that's basically the entire video. Like, don't waste your bell, man. Just be smart. Apply pressure. Okay, bye. <laughs>